So what do we need for such an experiment? Well, first of all, we need a way to measure the temperature of our resistor. This is what I will use. Basically, this is the thermistor attached to a multimeter. If you weld a length of copper and steel together, place the ends across a multimeter set to read millivolts, and then heat up the welded junction, a small voltage difference will show. And that is all a thermistor is. This then allows us to build a basic temperature gauge or electrical thermometer. So let me show you how simple this is. Initially this welded composite of two metals is not showing any voltage difference. This is because everything is at room temperature. But now look what happens when we hold this heat gun close to it. The voltage across the ends is now rising. Note the voltage shown is in the order of millivolts here. Well, what is actually happening here is the electrons in the two metals, once heated, vibrate. But since copper is a far better conductor of both heat and electrons, these vibrating electrons will be moving much more quickly and easily away from the heat through the copper than they can through the steel. This is known as the Seebeck effect, so you end up with a charge imbalance at each end. Hence you can measure a voltage difference at the ends. Now we'll let it cool down then the electrons will soon return to their original state. So if we can keep the heat constant then the voltage value showing will also stay at some fixed value. This then allows us to use this millivolt reading as a proxy for temperature. Basically we've built ourselves a thermometer. It's crude, uncalibrated but perfect for this experiment. Plenty accurate enough to measure the ratio of two voltages, an AC voltage and its effective DC that would produce the same temperature value. So here is what we will do. First, make sure the thermistor is held as close to the resistor as possible, like so. A small crocodile clip is perfect for this. I then connect between the other ends of the resistor and AC voltage. I'm going to use a variac and an isolation transformer to do this so that when I use a scope to measure the AC voltage I can't then blow the scope up. I never use a variac without an isolation transformer. I've left a link below on how I built this particular isolation transformer variac combo. If you want to build one yourself just go and have a look at that video. I now place my scope probe across the resistor so we can view the wave shape and amplitudes of the AC voltage, i.e. its peak-to-peak -peak voltage values. Each graticule on the scope screen is worth 10 volts, so now I slowly turn up the voltage with the variac until I have it set to exactly plus and minus 30 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Now I've chosen plus and minus 30 volts for no particular reason. I could have used any peak AC voltage value for this part of the experiment, but plus or minus 30 volts will work just fine. Now that we know the peak AC voltage is running at plus or minus 30 volts AC, we just watch the thermistor temperature rise on our millivolt multimeter. It will eventually settle down to some fixed temperature value. So we now see this value has settled down to 0.7 representing our temperature. We write down this value as this value we will later compare against in the next section when we're using the DC voltage. Once the mister has got back to room temperature, you know, zero volts showing on the multimeter, we then remove the AC voltage supply, e.g. the variac, and replace it with a DC power supply. And now everything else stays the same. Now we are using a DC voltage to heat our resistor. I slowly increase the DC power supply voltage until our thermistor temperature gauge again shows that same 0.7 temperature value. As that then will be the same energy usage converted to heat as before when we was using the AC voltage. That's the whole point of this experiment. Now that it has reached the same 0.7 temperature value, what does the DC power supply voltage value show us? The power supply readout shows this. But to confirm that value, I'm going to use a multimeter, connecting it directly across the resistor. So here we see at the same resistor temperature value of 0.7, i.e. the power usage, the 
voltage across the resistor is approximately 21.7 volts DC. So now we have all the data, the experiment is finished. So with an AC voltage of plus or minus 30 volts AC peak to peak, the temperature across the resistor was showing 0.7. With the DC power supply, we only got up to 21.7 volts DC to get this same 0.7 temperature showing. In a strict experiment, you would in fact try multiple resistors and values to confirm these results. But this is how you would do each one. Exactly this, just change the resistor and change the voltages and then you'll confirm this ratio between the AC and the DC voltage values. You can do as many combinations of resistors and voltages as you want just to prove that. So now we divide these two values. So 30 divided by 21.7 gives 1.38, which to two significant figures is 1.4. Now that 1.4 is almost identical to the actual value, which is known to be 1.414. It represents a tiny 3% error from the true known value. Now, the inverse of 1.414 is approximately 0.707. So if ever we want to find the RMS voltage from a known peak AC voltage, showing on an oscilloscope, for example, we just do this. The RMS value equals 0.707 times the AC peak value. That, of course, also applies to the RMS current as well, e.g. RMS current equals 0.707 times the AC peak current. But most of the time it's just easier to measure AC voltages, e.g. if you know the RMS voltage and resistance, you can then just use Ohm's law to find the RMS current very easily. I RMS equals V RMS over R. So most of the time you wouldn't try and measure the, the RMS current. You'd measure the RMS voltage and then calculate what the current is. So in this experiment, what we've done is we've proved that an RMS value is equal to 0.707 times an AC peak value using just an AC voltage power supply, a DC power supply, a scope, a resistor and a thermistor. I recommend you do this experiment. It's easy to set up and it will hammer home what RMS is. You'll never forget it if you do the experiment for yourself. Now, as a quick aside, those of you who know some maths will note how 1.414, the inverse of 0 0.707, is the value you get when you take the square root of 2. Now, that's significant because the detailed maths actually proves that this value is exactly the square root of 2 which leads nicely to the following recommended YouTube channel. If you're taking an electronics exam, then please watch the video link below by another YouTuber channel called Roly Show Petten. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's a college professor by the name of Dr. L. R. Linares, Associate Head of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Columbia in Canada. The link will be in the description text below. He's good and he's also very entertaining, so I highly recommend you go and check out his channel. Anyway, thanks for watching this RMS empirical proof. I hope this little experiment has helped you get an idea of what RMS actually means, because most people are not quite sure what it means. I hope this has cleared that up. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, speak to you soon.